Thank you so much for coming and for just allowing me to share a career mistake that I made so that you might all learn from it. First, let me start off with my bio. Now, I know it may seem a little weird that I'm starting off with my bio, but just trust me, there's a point. A teaching associate professor in the Institute for Advanced Analytics, Dr. Eric Labar is passionate about helping people solve challenges using their data. There, he helps design the innovative program to prepare a modern workforce to wisely communicate and handle a data-driven future at the nation's first Master of Science in Analytics degree program. He teaches courses in predictive modeling, forecasting, simulation, financial analytics, and risk management. Previously, he was director and senior data scientist at Elder Research, where he mentored and led a team of data scientists and software engineers. As director of the Raleigh, North Carolina office, he worked closely with clients and partners to solve problems in the fields of banking, consumer product goods, healthcare, and government. Dr. Labar holds a BS in economics, as well as a BS, MS, and PhD in statistics, all from NC State University. Again, you might think this is weird, or maybe even egotistical, that I made sure to highlight my bio. But trust me, we will circle back around to this. I've made a lot of mistakes in my career. I have found that this doesn't go away either. Yes, I've gotten better, but I'm definitely not perfect. Even with how fancy that bio might sound, former senior data scientist, former director, currently teach in one of the most highly rated master's degree programs in the country. Sounds fancy, but I still make mistakes. I still learn lessons all the time. One of the biggest lessons I have learned in my data science career over the past decade and a half would be this, fail fast. Failing fast is a simple and effective idea. Try hard to quickly evaluate paths that you are going down. Don't be afraid or too prideful to be willing to pivot off that path if it seems to not be working. In data science, we see this all the time. We have ideas about how to solve a problem. But let's be honest, every new problem has a new nuance that others did not. So we make mistakes but constantly evaluating those paths you go down allows you to fail fast and move on to a better solution. I could have come up with a myriad of examples of mistakes I have made in my career and having to learn from them. I even had a humbling conversation with a colleague last week. I made the classic mistake in creating learning material for other people, forgetting to be empathetic and keeping my audience in mind while designing material. I knew better than this. However, when I was invited to speak about career failures, the one thing that kept coming to my mind was probably the biggest mistake I had made in my career. And it was at the intersection of my career and my life. When I was younger, I was chasing after everything. I wanted prestige. I wanted to be known. I wanted to be the best. No one was going to stop me from achieving these goals. Some people would call this driven. By the end, I called it selfish. I constantly looked for the next great opportunity. I started off as an economic analyst. Then I transitioned into academia after my PhD. I was always looking to step up and lead my own department, create my own thing. Within seven years, I flirted with a few different schools about running their departments. These schools were all highly known. In the end, I ended up teaming up with an old friend by joining a data science consulting firm so I could lead my own office. I moved up from senior data scientist to director. I had my eye on the CEO position within a decade. I chased after titles, thinking they would satisfy me. They would not. I started to remember something my father-in-law always used to say. Don't ever say you don't have time for something. You have time for anything, just not everything. It all comes down to your priorities. Instead of saying you don't have time, say this isn't a priority. <laughs> this was great to use with clients when I was a consultant. They would ask for more and more. I would tell them, I'm sorry, 
but your first project is my priority. If that shouldn't be anymore, I would be happy to switch that to another project. Otherwise, that second project isn't a high priority. That helped them understand. <laughs> All this time I had a wife and a son. My daughter was on the way. Did I forget to mention that earlier? I started realizing I had been forgetting that at that time in my life as well. I'm sorry, buddy. Daddy doesn't have time to play. <laughs> One day I actually had time to sit down and play with my son for a little. Then I had to go travel for work. I'll never forget his words to me. You should come over and play again sometime. That ate me to my core. It still does. Then it clicked in my head. All those times I didn't have time, I was actually saying playing with my son wasn't a priority. My wife said he didn't understand what he was saying, but he did. During that long drive, I committed to change. I'd seen too many other people regret their careers at the very end because they didn't have enough time with their friends and family. My mom was one of those people. She told me that during this time in my life. You see, it wasn't my career. My job was amazing. I was working with my mentors and with my friends. I value every bit of that experience. I had to change. My priorities had to change. I had failed fast. Now I needed to pivot. Did you know there are 168 hours in a week? <laughs> they say we're supposed to work 40 and sleep 56. But let's be honest. We probably work a little more than we should and sleep a little less than we should. Let's just call it 50 for each. That still leaves 68 hours. The biggest piece of your life isn't work. It isn't sleep. Yet that smallest piece is typically how we define ourselves. Now, I hate writing these bios. <laughs> I know what people want. They want to hear about the small, insignificant pieces of my life. It's how we introduce ourselves. It's how we portray ourselves. I want to rewrite my bio for you. My name is Eric Labar. I am the husband to a loving wife. I'm so lucky because she is my best friend. I'm the father to two amazing children. Their joy and fun-loving spirits keep me feeling young every single day. My wife and I partner with another couple to lead a small group at our church. From that group, we've developed friends that are as close as family. I have incredible parents and a brother who would be there for me in a moment if I needed them. I am blessed. That is who I am. That is my bio. When preparing this talk, I was told to think about how my failure helped me further my career. <laughs> Instead, I feel that my failure helped me further me instead of my career. It helped me remember that my career isn't the primary thing in my life. I'm lucky. I failed fast. I evaluated and I learned. Then I pivoted. I invite you all to make sure you do the same thing in your careers. Thank you so much for allowing me to be able to talk.